is the book of 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 4. I will call on the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shai, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. So with that, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in whom the world has only called Jehovah or Yahweh. And Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son in whom the world has originally called Jesus Christ, in whom we do worship. We are the Hebrew Israelites, which consist of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians, to the 12 tribes, which are scattered abroad, greetings, giving double honors unto my apostles and my elders at Great Millstone that are ruling well and continue to do so, that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power and of his anointed, to call upon and be saved in these last and troubling days and to be protected from the said perils yet to fall upon the earth and even in the midst of the perils that are upon the earth we are saved through their names we are preserved we are protected we are shielded by those names which were taught unto us of our fathers our spiritual fathers of our fathers okay abraham isaac and jacob and the great men that came before that called upon that same name and also those that were with the son of man who had a name above every name given amongst men by whom we must be saved. So the name of the heavenly father is Yahweh, Yah, meaning he, Hawa, meaning exist or is or is to be. He is, he exists, he, the existing one. And in the name of his only begotten son, a name above every name, given amongst men here on earth to the Israelite man first, and also to the believers to call upon to be saved, consisting of women, children, helps of the prophets and those that have faith. The name Yahawashai, Yah, meaning he, Hawashai, meaning deliverer and savior. So with that, let's get right into this lesson. It was one is edifying. And this happened, uh, I believe, this is the day's date, the 10th. So this happened about three days ago in Russia. August 7th, okay, that the sky went red like this, blood red. And uh, the same thing happened about two or three years ago, about two, two and a half years ago, uh, when there was uh, fires all throughout the West, fires in California, and there were so many fires that you can see it from space. And also, there were so many fires that when you arose, the skies were red, like, we, like, like as if you were on the planet Mars. So these are the signs. These are the new signs that the men of the Lord asked for in the book of Sirach, chapter 36. And also uh, what was asked was that the prophets of the Lord <clears throat> be found in his name and that they be found faithful. Okay, and I'm going to read those scriptures in the uh, modern translation. So without further ado, let's get right into this lesson. I'm going to read 2 Samuel 22 and 4 once again. I will call on the Lord, Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, worthy who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised, man? You got a lot of people belittling the name. They don't call on the name. It doesn't matter what his name is. No, it does matter. I will call on the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. And we have many enemies all around. And our main enemy, Esau Edom, is preparing an offensive against us to destroy us, to attack us, to, to be rid of us once and for all, having that same spirit as Cain had on him against Abel, slaying Abel, but yet the blood of Abel uh, uh, crying out unto the Lord of what Cain did. Esau, Edom has that same spirit to slay his brother. But the thing is, our protection, our mighty shield and strong stay is the name of our heavenly father and his only begotten son. All right. We have the we have the shield of faith. We have our weapon, the sword. OK, which is the word of the heavenly father. We have the helmet of salvation, the strength of salvation, as it tells you in another place. And the fear of the Lord is our treasure. This man may may be rich in this world, but we're rich in faith. And let me get that. Uh, uh, is it rich, noble or poor? Let me get that. If the fear of the Lord is with him. Then that man is greater than all. Get that. It's all about the fear of the Lord in these days. Our apostles, our elders, brothers constantly are going into uh, uh, what's going on in, in the world, news and prophecy. 
But we have already prophesied unto you these things that are happening now. We're not cut off guard by these things. But you people are that have not listened, especially our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American and Seminole Indians. The doors are closing soon. The Lord will not be found. So seek the Lord while he may be found. OK, this is the book of Ecclesiastes 10 and 31. He that is honored in poverty, how much more in riches? And he that is dishonorable in riches, how much more in poverty? That's Esau. He's dishonorable in riches. How much more when he's put in his place? And we are honored in our poverty because we have the greatest treasure, the treasure, the strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord. That is treasure. And we also have the gift of faith, which is uh, the greatest thing you can ever wield all right, in a lifetime. All right. So how much more when we're exalted? How much more honored will we be with the riches, true riches, enduring riches? OK. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, but soon the Lord is going to give us the actual treasures of the earth, the secrets of things that otherwise were not yet known. That's why these these signs don't catch us off guard. We just praise Yahweh for his mighty hand and his mighty power. Uh, praise the Lord with all your strength because you can never go far enough and he, and he will far exceed our expectations as always. Now this is uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 14. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come of the Lord. Yahweh Shai. All right, so whatever state you find yourself in, praise ye the Lord. Because even when our, uh, you know, even our, our people as a nation, we're in a low state, but the Lord still has his eyes on us. And how much more the, the men preaching this word, we might find ourselves in certain situations where we ain't really got it like we once did. But yet the Lord sustains us. So call halal yum la, Yahweh Shai, man, for that. And plus it, it teaches you something. You're molded, you're, you're chiseled. You're, 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 you're put into that furnace of affliction. The Lord said, uh, uh, acceptable men are put in the furnace of affliction. All right. And yet the same men has the Lord given his secrets to prophesy, to preach, to warn the world of him, to warn our people of him. Give them warning from me. We give you warning of Yahweh Shai. Through the terror of the Lord, we persuade men and only the elect will come in. If this is not a scary sight unto you that's on this uh on the screen, then I don't know what to say. Imagine the day of the Lord. There's darkness and not light. No brightness in it. But they're even very dark. Alright? This is Ecclesiasticus 11 and 18. There is that waxeth rich by his weariness and pinching, and this is the portion of his reward. See, Esau Edom, everything that he has gotten has been with, with uh struggle in a sense. By way of the sword, he had to get everything that he has. Us, on the other hand, we're just going to inherit it because it's ours anyway through Yahweh Shai. He has inherited all. He uh, uh, owns all. Everything has been given into his hands of the father. And him being such a great king and lord and leader and brother. All right. He's going to give us that same inheritance. All right. Those are the first fruits, the predestinated ones. So in this world, we are uh, we are hated. We are despised, and that's cool. If we suffer with the Lord, we shall also reign with him. So we're going we gonna to get it all in time. All right. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 11 and 21. Marvel not at the works of, of sinners, but trust in the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, and abide in thy labor, in this labor, in this work. Now, some of you brothers may not be called to be prophets, but you believe in the word, you, you trust in the word, you come out to the camps, you listen. You could be a help of the brethren. You know, help the ministry, you know, uh, pay tights. OK, uh, 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 whatever you, you can do to, to further the ministry, to push it, do what you can do. Also, with your sisters, there's certain things you can do. Certain sisters will, will make garments. They'll bring brothers food, water, things of that nature. Hey, but they best believe that your reward will not be forgotten. Your labor will not be in vain. OK, those that labor in the Lord labor not in vain. Because we know that we're going to receive a reward of Yahweh, whether you preach, teach, prophesy, edify, okay, personify, <laughs> all right, or pass by the camp, whether you be a brother, sister, that may just be a help, okay? And certain brothers that really have that knack to be a prophet, hey, the Lord is going to give you that final push to actually get out there and preach because. You can be listening to brothers for like a month, two months, the apostles for a month, two months. You know more than 
damn near 90 percent of the earth, save for the, the brethren that's already in from our apostles and elders on down. We know more than men understand. And you can actually go out there and preach. So now is the time. OK, why does yet day like how I said, I work the works of him that sent me. Why does yet day for the night cometh when no man can work. So we have to work. This is Ecclesiastes 11 and 21. Marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Lord and abide in thy labor. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. I think about Joseph when he was in Egypt. All right. He went through all that, the trials. He's gone for a very long time before he even appeared before Pharaoh. But in every uh, uh, aspect, the Lord was with him. OK, he was uh, well favored, beloved. The Lord added unto him. Hence his name, Joseph, or in the Hebrew, uh, the, the true pronunciation is Yahweh which means he will add. The Lord will add. The Lord added unto Joseph and made him great. OK, he was in a poor state when he was first sold into Egypt, a slave. But then he rose to the scepter of that kingdom. And he was the ruler over the world. He was the ruler of Egypt. Only the Pharaoh was ruler in name only. But it was truly Joseph, Yahweh who was the true ruler. All right. So the Lord can do that. He have done that in the past. He will do it again, especially unto his men that have been laboring. How much more uh, for our apostles and our elders, man? How much more for us? The Lord is going to exalt us. He's going to lift us up because we do not, uh, uh, we don't marvel at the works of sinners because we know that they're going to be judged in the end. How about that? Okay. That's pretty much it. Uh, Rich, noble, poor, isn't that? Rich, noble. Let me just put noble here. You know, the fear of the Lord is the greatest thing that you can uh, possess. There we go. Ecclesiastes, 20, uh, Ecclesiastes 10 and 22. Whether he be rich, noble, or poor, their glory is the fear of the Lord. Man, that's it. This is Ecclesiastes 18 and 4. To whom have he given power to declare his works? And who shall find out his noble acts? The Lord has given his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. That's why we call upon the name of our God and of his anointed. All right, the Lord ever revealed these secrets only unto his servants. And that's a beautiful uh, place to be in. That the Lord is dealing with you directly. That the Lord will do nothing but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants the prophets. Okay. Now let me get. Uh, hmm. Verse six. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Many judgments, many, <laughs> many, many signs, many spooky, fearful things are happening all over the earth, all over the world. None of these things would occur or be permitted if it was not of the Lord's say so of his go ahead. The Lord even said that a bird doesn't even fall out the nest unless the Lord ordains it. That's how you know the Lord has his hand and his and his eyes on everything. He controls all everything. But we're on the side of praising the Lord for everything he does, whether it be good or ill. For these other people, they're going to they're going to fear the mighty hand of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. It's Amos 3 and 6. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city? We're part of that trumpet. We're giving the people warning of the Lord and his coming and his terrible might. All right. It says, shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Question. Shall there be evil, bad time, in a city and the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim Hashem, have not done it? Surely the Lord power, Yahweh, Bashim Hashem, will do nothing. But he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So his secret have been revealed unto his servants, the prophets. His, his plan of what he's going to do is being revealed unto his servants, the prophets. And we're letting the world know we're not ashamed to testify our Savior openly. And even in the midst of that, the hate will come, the, 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 the despising. But hey, so be it. We're saying the words of the Lord. Take them or leave them, but these things will happen. As Amos 3 and 8, the lion have roared. Who will not fear? The Lord, Yahweh, Bashim al power hath spoken. Who can but prophesy? That's it. Who can but prophesy? So I'm going to play this clip. Or 
such scary scene. Yesterday evening, August 7th, a strange scary phenomenon has occurred in the sky of St. Petersburg, Russia, after a thunderstorm passed. The sky suddenly turned blood red and the city was colored with a fearful red light, as if it were the doomsday, the last day of the earth. This frightening scene is a phenomenon that appeared at sunset yesterday. So pretty much in the clip, it says this phenomenon occurred because of a thunderstorm that came through. Okay, man, but let's get it because the Lord, that's how he visits. All right. And also, uh, they say it looks like the doomsday, the doomsday. Right. So let's get um, Isaiah. Okay. Bear with me, brothers. Yeah, here we go. Is Isaiah 29 and 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah of hosts, with thunder and with earthquake and great noise. And that's what exactly is going on all over the world. Earthquakes over here, thunderstorms over there, great noise over there. With storm and tempests. As they said, a storm just uh, passed through there and it left the skies looking red, like, like you woke up on the planet Mars. And the flame of devouring fire, there's fires all over, fires in Europe. Fires in the West, drought, flooding, heat, all right, excessive heat. The Lord is turning things up, all right. Barakatai Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, man. Mm, that's it. So, uh, just proving the point that the Lord is in the storms, but then yet the Lord left a sign, like, yeah, he came through with the storm, but then he left a sign in the sky to let you know that this is not uh, 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 just a regular storm. This is of the hand of Yahweh Bashim al Shai. Man, and I want to get what Yahweh Shai said about the people. You can, you know when, when it's about to be hot or cold. How can you not discern the times? I want to get something else. Oh, strange act. The Lord is, is, is doing strange acts in the earth. So you know that is him. All right, strange act. All right. Even the strangeness, strangeness of our salvation. Okay. Bear with me, brothers. There it is. This is Isaiah 28 and 21. For the Lord Yahweh Bashemashai shall rise up as in Mount Perizim. He shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. Strange to the people of this world. They're, 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 they're dismayed by the signs of heaven. But we are not dismayed at them. Okay. Signs of the times. Bear with me, brothers. Come on. The times. Just going, going in the spirit, you know. Here it is, Matthew 16 and 3. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today for this. Uh, let me get let me get uh, verse 2. Start from the point. This is on Matthew 16 and 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, when it is evening, he say, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. Hey, the sky is red. Look at that. And in the morning it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, ye hypocrites, you actors, even our people that's in these churches and our people that claim to know God, do you not like, is there not an inkling in your mind that something's not right? I got to get right with the Lord. I got to, I got to know what this means because these pastors in these churches don't know what the freak is going on, but yet they proclaim that they know the Lord. Well, do we explain this to me? What does this mean? Does this mean something or is this a regular day? This is just a phenomenon that just happens. It says it's a strange phenomenon. Okay. Let's see here. It 
It looks like the doomsday, judgment day, man. It says, and in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? <sighs> a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now, what was the sign of Jonah? He was in Nineveh prophesying against Nineveh. That's going to be the sign for, for you out there. That's saying, what the, what is, what's going on? God, give me a sign. The sign is the men of the Lord being out there. The prophets, just like Jonah. And what are they saying? What are they talking about? Peace and love and all that crap? No, they're talking about Babylon is going to be destroyed, a.k.a. America, and these other nations are going to fall and crumble. And there's only going to be one kingdom, one nation. That's going to be Yasha Allah, man. That's going to be ruling over all, ruling over all other nations. But first and foremost, before that can happen, these signs must come. The Lord must plague the earth. Judge the earth for its evil, plague Babylon, a.k.a. America, as ancient Egypt, with even newer plagues and the plagues of Egypt, to let you know that this is, this is the same power that flooded the earth. This is the same power that destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. This is the same power that destroyed Egypt with ten incurable plagues and delivered his people out of Egypt and drowned Pharaoh and his army. This is the same power that through the disbelief and unbelief of his own people, he killed them in the wilderness but yet spared the newer generation along with Joshua and Caleb to make it into the land. This is that same power. This is the same power that sent his son into the earth to be a propitiation for us, for our sins, to, to make uh, the right, uh, to make the wrong right through his blood, through his sacrifice, to bring us back unto the father, the same power. Okay. This is that same power. And he's doing works in the earth. And if you cannot see them, woe unto you. Woe unto you. All right. So this is over there in Russia. War is coming. The Lord is, uh, is not playing. He's letting you know something is about to occur. Something is about to happen. OK, not bad. Good on time. Now, let's go to the book of Jeremiah. It's 44 and uh, 13 and 12. See here. Bear with me, brothers. Man, this is what the Lord is going to do to our people that remain in this modern Egypt, that do not see the signs and actually wake up. The Lord is sending these signs so that you may see. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Jeremiah 44 and 12. And I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their face to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there. And they shall be consumed and fall on the land of Egypt, America. They shall even be consumed by the sword, warfare, the gun. Yeah, that's, what, that's what's going on. That's why all these marches is here. Jake, his ass is getting slain with that sword. But this man, Esau Edom, is actually going to come out with new weaponry. Hence, is going to turn to the time of Jacob's trouble. And wh wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And, and all faces are turned into paleness. Men are going to become weak out here. Men are going to faint. Men are going to be afraid. Right. It tells you that in uh, second address that uh, men shall be afraid. All right. That's, people going to slay one another. Friends shall fight one another as enemies. But this is going into to uh, Israel, preferably Judah, the southern kingdom. And also the northern kingdom is going to be punished for those that turn not back unto the Lord, that, that have not heard uh, uh, the cry of the former prophets nor of the prophets of, of today. You will be destroyed and consumed. If you do not turn back and, you, and the same must know it after death by pain. Now, this is uh, continuing on and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword and by the famine. Famine is coming. Lack of resources. They shall die from least even unto the greatest by the sword and by the famine. And they shall be in execration and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. That's why these things are happening to our people on a major scale, because the Lord is beginning at his house. Whether you know you're Israel or not, the Lord is beginning at our people. You Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American, and Seminole Indians. And it doesn't matter where you look like or where you are. The Lord is going to touch you. But his elect is going to turn unto him fully and not and no longer stay upon him that smote them, which is Esau eating himself, the claim white man with his a hellish and harsh system 
All right, even though we're still in this harsh and hellish uh, system, the Lord has freed us in our mind. When you return, the Lord makes you free in your mind through the truth. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but in Yahweh Shai, you shall have peace. That's what he promises you when you come into this word. All right, and things like this do not sway you or disturb you because you know plainly that is of Yahweh. Bashim Yahweh Shai, that these things be. This is Jeremiah 44 and 13. For I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. As I have punished Jerusalem, the Lord did us bad only because we deserved it. By the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence, the Lord is going to plague America as he did uh, Jerusalem. Send armies against him, famine, pestilence, plague, destruction. Okay, prophets. All right, even before all this was happening, what did the Lord send as a warning? His prophets to let everyone know what, what was going was going to happen. Okay, I know this is around is around here somewhere where the Lord is at, uh, telling Jake, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, what, what I say is going to happen or what, what you think is going to happen? I forget how it's red. Um, bear with me, brothers. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is it. Jeremiah 44 and 28. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah, the, the remnant. And all the remnant of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt, America, to sojourn there, shall know whose words shall stand, mine or theirs. So the Lord is telling you that he's sending these plagues through his men. That only, only uh, uh, famine, plague, pestilence, destruction, the sword, newly created creatures, ravenous animals, beasts, the teeth of wild beasts, new signs, the signs of Egypt, plague, all right, destruction. We're letting you know that these things are coming upon America, Babylon, the, the world, okay? The earth, war is coming, famine, pestilence, hyperinflation, a dark time is ahead. But yet for those that remain in the light, they will have the light that shines in a dark place when it does get really dark out here. And the Lord is letting Jake know, well, you think your, your plans are going to stand more than mine's? No, the Lord's plans are going to stand more than yours. Jake think they're going to do this. I'm going to get a business. I'm going to do that. I'm going to uh, have these many uh, children. My children are going to go to this college. No, no, none of those things are happening because the Lord is, is removing those things. He's removing this present system and he's turning it into a digital system to bring forth the prophecy of the MOTB, the, the mark of the beast. And if you do not have the RFID, you will not be able to survive or live in, uh, uh, in Esau's society or his system. But we are the hopeful elect, Lord is willing. I'm one of those men. We're going to break away from this society. We already have in our spirit. And soon when that time actually comes, that's when the just shall live by faith. And by every word that proceeded out of the mouth, and by every word, let me say that again, and by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Heavenly Father shall we live. Because we will not live by bread alone, though we will be fed, though we will eat. Call all yimla, Yahweh Now let's get up out of there. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 3 and 17. And it reads, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. So from our apostles, our elders, okay, on down, from our apostles and elders on down, they have been made watchmen. All of us have been made watchmen. And the Lord is letting us know as a watchman, hey, you better tell my people everything I want them to know to warn them from the power of the Lord, from his power, from from, from the Lord himself. So we have a very important job and we're not here to play games or entertain any of our people. We're here to tell you the truth, nothing but the truth. Now, if you want entertainment or you want to watch a big booty woman video, hey, you got plenty of that. You got TikTok, you got all this other crap that you can watch whatever the hell you want to watch. But here, when you come here or you click on an apostle's video or a brother's video, we're going to give you the, the, the straight and skinny. We're going we gonna to tell it like it is. We're going to prophesy unto you what is yet to come. And we're going to let you know that the things that are happening in this world, world have been prophesied unto you. And not to be alarmed. But if you are alarmed, hey, be, be afraid. Fear. Fear what the Lord Yahweh Shai can do. And turn unto him. And if you will not yet turn unto him, you will be destroyed. Okay? The Lord is not playing any games anymore. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, the wicked of our people, those that have become wicked, you are not made wicked, you are upright. 
but the ways of the wicked, Esau, Edom, the self-proclaimed white man has seduced you. Now it's time to repent. Turn back unto the Lord. Why? You still have a chance. When I say unto the wicked, the wicked of our people, thou shalt surely die, which you will. And thou givest him not warning. That's the watchman's job is to give our people warning. So they can't say, well, I didn't know nobody came and told me. It doesn't. That's a goddamn lie. You have been told. And you just refuse to listen or to believe. Hence, like our forefathers that perish in the wilderness, they die for disbelief. Do not, don't you die for disbelief. But if you do not believe, you will die in your unbelief as it is written. All right. And all the unfaithful shall, uh, yeah, all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. All right. All right. You will die. It says, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thine hand. See, the blood of, 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 of our people is required at our hands if we, if we do not tell you the truth. And if we tell you the truth and you still refuse to listen, your blood shall be upon your own head. But we have delivered our souls because we told you the truth. We're not in the wrong here. You are because you did not listen. So, uh, says yet, if thou warn the wicked, this will we do. And oh, and really, uh, the, verse eighteen is for these other camps. The the blood of their congregations that they don't warn is going to be on their own heads, and they're going to die. But verse nineteen is for uh, uh, the men of Great Millstone and, and the affiliate camps that teach the likewise doctrine, beginning with our apostles and elders. They warn the wicked of our people. They warned us when we were in our wicked Gentile state, but now we have changed. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, which the majority of our people will not turn from it, nor from his wicked way, but we, we turn from it, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And that's it. So call all you call all you lie, you hey, it's, it's, it's getting real serious out here. There's no time. Uh, to waste nor time to play. We're only going to give you, thus saith the Lord. Cry the poor. That cry. Bear with me, brothers, cry. I know it's in Proverbs. So hear the cry of the poor now. Hear the cry of the, for, uh, of the prophets, of the former prophets. Are the prophets that, that are here now in your time, hear thy voice. All right, take heed unto it. All right, is your spirit speaking unto you like go this way, go that get go this way. This is the way. A lot of our people turn from it. All right. <whistles> Isaiah 12 and 6. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion, for great. Is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee? The Lord is in the midst of us. Once again, through the, the sacrifice and precious blood of Mashiach, we are returned. Okay? The Lord is, a, is, is among his people once again. But for our people that remain outside, man, you will, you will be destroyed. Okay? Now, this is Proverbs 19 and 18. Chasten thy son while there is hope. That's what the Lord is doing with the elect. He's chastening his sons and his daughters. All right. While there is, is uh there while there is hope in them that they're okay, they're not too far gone. They'll repent. And uh and I'll save them and I'll blot out their sins. By the blood of my son, I'll blot out their sins. That's what the Lord is doing here. He said, I'm chastening you that we do not suffer wrath with the world. He's chastening us that we will not suffer wrath with the world. It says, chasten thy son while there is hope and let not thy soul spare for his crying. So we cry out, but we cry out to the Lord and the Lord is not going to spare us for our crying because he's no, he knows what he's doing. Same for, you know, your actual physical children. Don't spare them for their crying. Whoop they ass because so they can know. All right. It's Proverbs 21 and 13. Whoso stoppeth his ear at the cry of the poor, and that's the men of the Lord. We're in a poor state. We we have a poor look. We're in mourning. We're in sackcloth. Okay, but our people don't look past the outward and actually hear the message. They're looking at the outward. They're too wrapped up in the outward because this world and their and their 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 master Esau Edom 
has made them to think such. They, they can't see the spiritual anymore. They can't grasp the, uh, the, the spiritual or the holy. It says, whoso stoppeth his ear at the cry of the poor, the, the men of the Lord, the prophets, who are, whoever stops his ear at the cry of the poor, at the, at, the, at the the words of the prophets, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. So when you cry in the day of your calamity, you also will not be heard. All right. It is the book of Second Chronicles. Bear, bear with it. Should be coming in. Come on. What's going on? All right. Second Chronicles 15. All right. In verse one. But look at the ledger. It says Asa which was the king of, of Judah. He was the father of Jehoshaphat. Okay, and he died from the disease in his feet because he put more hope in the physicians than in the Lord. <clears throat> but in the sight of the Lord, he, you know, he was righteous in, in the eyes of the Lord. That was just his one mistake at the end of his life. But this is uh, Asa's religious reforms. Now, that's what we're doing in the spirit. Is This is a great awakening. This is a religious reform. What does religion mean? It's just to worship. Now we're going to go into that word reform and I'm going to read uh, uh, on down. Now this is the word reform. Okay, close out of there. We're going to go to the word reform. And it says reform, a verb, which is an action. It says to convert into or restore to another. So the Lord is restoring us unto himself. Uh, Asa at this time restored, you know, the worship of the Lord, breaking down uh, the groves and idols and things of that nature. Having our people truly trust in our power because uh asa in, in a certain battle he went against a million a million man army but he called upon the name of the lord and and the army was turned to uh to flight and they and they destroyed that army even though they were a, a lesser force he called upon the name of the lord and the lord gave him the victory okay it says to convert hey that's what's going on with us all right we're, we're, we're uh remembering where we come from and where our strength lies and our firmness. It says to convert into or restore to another and better form. We're, we're, co we're coming into a better form than we ever have of strength, health, firmness, etc. We're being conformed into the image of the son of Yahweh. We're being like Yahweh Shai. We're, we're turning into Yahweh Shai. It says the meaning change someone or something for the better correct improve bring someone away from an evil course of life that's what the lord has done for us man through our apostles and elders just like asa had a reform our apostles and elders had a reform sent from the heavens through yahweh Shai. this is this is what the disciples had of old that's why uh uh, uh many of our people are leaving the, the christian church and in these different denominations because it is a true religious reform it says uh correcting we're we're improving our people hey through the word they're, they're beginning they're, they're getting better they're changing all right and they're they're turning away from an evil course of life that they once lived uh, under the, the guise of esau edom okay and what's making our, our people turn even faster is the plagues that are happening in the earth these different strange signs they're like okay this has to be of the hand of the lord then they see the men of the lord as Yahweh Shai stated, an evil generation seeketh after a sign, but no sign shall be given unto it, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. And that's what our people are seeing. Men of the Lord, like Jonah, prophesying against the place that they're standing in, that the Lord himself is going to overthrow it. Okay? Let's keep reading. It says, of governments, institutions, etc. All right, so that's reform. All right. It says reform any proceeding which brings back a better order of things or attempts to improve the present. So, hey, we, we're seeking the old paths now. All right. That's what we're doing. All right. So that's the word reform. Now we understand what Asa is going into in, in this particular uh, in these particular scriptures here. Now we understand what that word reform means. All right. Turn it from the path of evil or the course of an evil life. And only to get better, to change, to have strength, health. All right. It says, and the spirit of the and the spirit of Yahweh, Hashem came upon Azariah, which was a prophet, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord Yahweh, Hashem is with you, while ye be with him. 
And if ye seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. And that's exactly what the Lord is going to do for the elect. He's found. We can find him now. We have his name. But for two thirds of our people that don't want to seek him out, he will not be found of them because he will he will withdraw himself. Let's read in the NLT. And he went out to meet King Asa as he was returning from the bat from the battle. Listen to me, Asa. He shouted. Listen to me, Asa. I have to shout like that because that's, you know, when you read it, you have to read it like that. Listen to me, Asa. He shouted. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin, the Lord Yahweh by Shema Shah will stay with you as long as you stay with him. Whenever you seek him, you will find him. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. And that's it. Ooh, man. That's going to make for the point in this lesson. What's, look what's happening in the earth. Seek ye out the Lord, Yahweh by Shema Shai, while he may be found. And how do you seek the Lord out? By seeking out his men. By going out to the camps. By even tuning into the videos and just learning, man. Learning, understanding who Yahweh by Shema Shai is. And why he has done all the things that he has done. And why he's doing the things that he's doing. And why he will do the things that he will do. Upon our nation. Upon this earth. Upon our enemies. Upon the heathen. Upon us in physical form what he is about to do. Change us. Why these things are happening. These things are explained to you and broken down to you. By way of the men of the Lord. That have been given the secret of Yahweh Bashim al -Shai To give unto you. Now this is 2 Chronicles 15 and 3. Now for a long season Israel have been without the true power and without a teaching priest and without law. People have been without law, without a teaching priest. The, the, the great high priest is a Hamashiach under the order of Melchizedek, which is a he, two Hebrew words, Malach meaning king, Tazadak meaning righteousness. He is the king of righteousness. He is the high priest in the heavens and we have taken on his priesthood. And we have all become priests. And now you have the priests beginning with our apostles and elders at Great Millstone on down. And when we go out to the camps, those are altars. We're making sacrifices. We're making we're get, we're uh, presenting our body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. So now there is no excuse for our people. Now, for a long season, Israel, you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans have been without the true power. And without a teaching priest, without the, the men of the Lord, the prophets. So you did have an excuse, a cloak in a sense. But now you don't have a cloak because the name of your power is out again. The, his true name, his proper name, Yahweh, the name of his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. You have a teaching priest, the apostles, elders, men of the Lord. And you have the law. We go into the law. We break the law down unto you. And even these other camps, we got to give them credit. They go into the law to keep the law. So now, Jake, you are not without law or instruction. Now let's read in the NLT. For a long time, Israel was without the true power, without a priest to teach them, and without the law to instruct them. And that's exactly what's going on. Okay, let's keep reading. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord, that's what we're doing now in this time, that's what our people did in the past. But when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord, Yahweh, by Shem Shai, power of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. Beautiful. NLT. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord Yahweh, Bashim al Shai, the power of Israel, and sought him out, they found him. Now, this is what's going on in the world, even here and now. We see it. It looks like the doomsday, right? Second Chronicles 15 and 5. And then you have the monkey eggs and all types of plagues and, and, and diseases and wars on the break of rumors of wars and evils and and, and uh, uh, perilous times and evil spirits and evil angels out here and, and death is, is, is growing and pestilence. All right. And, and dark times and hyperinflation. The love of many waxing cold. OK. Violence is in the earth. Second Chronicles 15 and five. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. The Lord is doing that again. He's bringing it back. All right. He's making his rounds throughout the earth. These are dark times. Says so during those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Soon they're going to lock everything down. Cities are going to be cut off. Martial law is going to be declared. Things of that nature. It was not safe to travel. 
Hey, because you might get robbed or, or be looted out or raped or taken or captured. All right, if you're a woman or a child or someone one that's weak or feeble, even if you're a man, you can fall into dire straits. But if you walk with Yahweh, not if, when you walk with Yahweh by Shema Shai, you have nothing to fear. As David said, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. All right? It says, during those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land, whether it be economic, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, political, uh, uh, food-wise, like food shortages, not enough food, not enough medicine, not enough supplies. That's the famine, not a uh, uh, lack of resources. It says, during those dark times, it was not safe to travel. Problems troubled the people of every land. It's different problems everywhere. Okay? Natural or unnatural, strange, or, 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 or a problem in the food, or the, or the politics, or the laws, or the people. That's what's going on right now, man. Second Chronicles 15 and 6, A nation was destroyed of nation, and city of city. For Yahweh, Bashem al did vex them with all adversity. <laughs> That's it. That's what the Lord's going to bring back. He's going to double it back. He's going to make his rounds on on this promise, once again, it happened in the past. That's why it's written in the Chronicles, the writings, the records, the recordings. And it's going to be done hereafter, in this time. It says nation fought against nation. It's going to be race wars, class wars, world war, war of the realms. That's what's coming. Nation fought against nation and city against city. For Yahweh Bashem El Shai was troubling them with every kind of problem. Man, but this is for the uh, hopeful elect. Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak in this labor, nor in just, uh, uh, you know, moving through this life in the spirit and power of, of Yahweh Shemesh. He will not uh, uh, allow you to be faint or wax feeble. He's going to make you stronger and stronger. You're only going to go from strength to strength. You're only going to go from faith to faith. All right. And let me get that. I'm going to get that, Lord willing, after this. Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Let's read it in the NLT. But as for you, be strong and courageous, for your work will be rewarded. <laughs> strength to strength. Or stronger and stronger. That's what it is, stronger and stronger. All right. So I believe it's in Job. Okay. Yep, Job 17 and 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way. What way? The way of the Lord. The right path. The righteous uh, uh, way, the straight gate. So the righteous also shall hold on his way. And he that hath clean hands. How are we cleaning our hands? By prophesying unto our people, telling them the truth. We're washing the blood off our hands. All right? And he that hath clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. <laughs> Psalm 105 and 24. And he increased his people greatly. And made them stronger than their enemies. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing right now through his name. We're waxing stronger than our enemies. Just in the Lord's name alone. And that's all we need. Call all you la. Yahweh man. All right. Psalm 31 and 11. For the Lord Yahweh Bashimah have redeemed Jacob. And ransomed him. From the hand of him that was stronger than he. That's it. So go faith to faith. Faith to faith. It's all about faith. Faith to faith. It's a lack of faith. All right. Go well, from faith to faith. Okay. Is it in the New Testament? Let me. I believe it is. Let's see here. Bear with me, brothers. See if we can find it. There we go. Romans 1 and 17. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. <laughs> Let's read it again. Romans 1 and 17. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Man, so where we at uh, on the time? Let's see here. Okay, not bad. I want to bring 
one more point out, a few more scriptures, and we're going to close out. Okay, so bear with me, brothers. All right, I'm back, Akim. Now, this is the book of Sirach in the modern translation. In uh, chapter, this is uh, chapter 36 of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. All right, modern translation. And it reads, and I, I read this in my last uh, lesson in the uh, the original form, you know, the uh, King James. But I'm going to read it in the modern translation here. It says, O Lord, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, power of the universe, look upon us and have mercy. The Lord is doing that. He's, he's beginning to turn back unto his people. He's beginning to see us again. He's beginning to behold us through the sacrifice of a Mashiach and through our belief in Mashiach. Uh, let me get that. If, if you confess in your uh, uh, heart, does it say heart? That uh, he raised him from the dead. Confess. Confession. Get that. Because that's what's happening uh, on a major scale. Vocab, Cologne, and all these clowns are mad and bugged out that our people are turning back unto the Lord. Truly turning back to the Lord. Not that fake ass shit that they thought they were doing in the world. Okay, nah, that, that was fake as hell. Alright? Uh, damn ugly ass Cesar boys. You get the fuck out of here with them idols, man. You damn pagans. And I'm gonna start I'm gonna keep calling you that. Pagans. You're not Christians, you're pagans. The only true Christians are Israelites. So our people coming out of the Christian church, becoming Israelites, hey, well, they are the true Christians. They're following the anointed. Okay? Now let's get this right here in Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With your mind, you believe unto righteousness, right? Righteousness is immortal. Tells you that in the Apocrypha. And with the mouth, confession is, uh, uh, Salaki, and, and, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation, unto Salvation of who? Israel, the elect of Israel. It begins with them. Okay, it's uh, verse 11. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed on Yahweh Shai. Got to believe on Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, man. <laughs> Let me read this here in verse 9. This is the point I want to get. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh Shai, and shalt believe in thine heart, your mind, that Yahweh have raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Woo! And that's the power right there. That's the danger. To change a man from the inside, to have a man believe, woo! And you can't take his belief away. That's dangerous in, in, in the sight of our enemies. <laughs> because their main thing is sorcery, lies, deception. But the Lord hath freed us in our mind by the truth. Romans 10 and 9, NLT. If you confess with your mouth that Yahweh Shai is Lord and believe in your heart, your mind, that Yahweh raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Woo! And that's that. That's how easy it is. That's how plain it is. That's how uh, simple it is. It is simplicity of a Mashiach. All right. Now, this is uh, back in uh, Sirach 36, modern translation, verse 2. Make every nation stand in fear of you. Is is not the nation standing in fear? This was this is what happened in Russia about uh, three days ago. This happened on the the seventh seventh of, of July. So this is a few days ago, but they were like bugged out at, right after a storm. Okay, and that's how the Lord visited them. So this is a sign that the Lord ain't fucking around. And doomsday is coming. Judgment day is coming for ugly ass Russia. It's coming for Babylon. It's coming for all you heathen nations. The Lord's gonna go to war with you. He's gonna destroy you. And the, and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our power and of his anointed. All right. It says, every na it says, make every nation stand in fear of you. And by the Lord's signs, by the death he's sending out, by the, the, the different pestilences and plagues, the Lord is letting his uh, mighty hand be known in the earth. It says, take action against the foreign nations. The Lord will. When Yahweh Shai returns, he's going to destroy the armies of the world in the, in the, uh, in the Levant region, in that region uh, known as the Fertile Crescent in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Yahweh Shapat, the Lord's decision. All right, the Lord's going to take action, uh, literally physically take action that day. That's going to be the day of the Lord. He's going to shoot the missiles off. He's going to send out the lasers. There was the hiding of his power as written in the book of Habakkuk. All right, but the Lord is taking action by what? By the signs, by the prophecies coming to pass as it tells you in Habakkuk. Though it tarry, wait for it. It will not tarry. All right. 
So, so these, these prophecies are not tarrying, man. They're happening. It says, take action against the foreign nations and let them witness your power. That's right. You have used us to show them how holy you are. Yeah, because the Lord is only dealing with Israel. And the world is beginning to see that. Oh, shit. The Lord is still dealing with his people even after all that they have been through. Ah, why? But yet, yes, the Lord is still dealing with Israel. He shall yet choose Israel. He shall yet choose Jacob. All right. It says, you have used us to show them how holy you are. Now use them to show us how great you are. So the Lord is going to use them to show his greatness. Like, damn, the Lord gave him all this power, all these weapon, weapons and re weaponry only to show the Lord uh, 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 is over all. And then the Lord said that he, he said that uh, in Daniel that he ruled in the kingdoms of men. And he set it up over it, the basis of men, which is Esau, Edom. And look how much he set this man up. This man went from a caveman with no language to goddamn nuclear weaponry and planes and shit like that. But they, that's showing the Lord's power. We see the Lord's power like, oh, and, and we know, okay, the Lord's going to destroy this dude like nothing. Uh, this, this, this man got robots and stuff like that to come against us, these weapons to destroy us. But yet the Lord is going to lift up a standard amongst his men. And for those that, that cannot protect themselves as the women and the children and the elderly that believe, the Lord's going to have Michael stand up, the heavenly host, to defend them that cannot defend themselves. So that's it. And the Lord's going to give us the power to heal our people. Okay? Call on him. The Lord's going to show his power. It says, you have used us to show them how holy you are. Now use them to show us how great you are. That's right. Let them learn, as we have learned, that there is no power. Oh, Lord, Yahweh Bashmashai, but you. <laughs> Give new signs. Is this, is this not a new sign? Give new signs. Perform new miracles. Show us your glorious strength. That's it. Bring on that appointed time when everyone can talk about the great things you do. It's happening now. We're coming into that time where everybody has to admit and submit their minds and their thinking patterns unto a higher power, unto our Lord, unto our God. The news has to say what the, the scripture has been saying. The people have to say what the scriptures have been saying. Everybody has to admit and come to the conclusion that this is of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, the power of Israel. Though they may not know his name, they know it's of a higher power. But now, but there is no excuse. No, they do know the name because the name has been pushed. That's why the end is coming. And when this gospel shall be preached in all the world, then the end shall come. This gospel, okay? It says, bring on that appointed time when everyone can talk about the great things you do. Pour out your furious, flaming anger and let none of our enemies survive. Destroy those who have oppressed your people. The Lord is going to do that. He's doing it now with the, the monkey eggs and plagues and the pestilences and the famines. He's setting the stage hey, for his uh, glorious appearing through his son. All right, the Lord's presence is going to be known through the expressed image. His son, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, and the world will know that there is a power and that he, Yahweh Shai, is Lord. And that he does not look like uh, the person everyone thought, but that he indeed looks like the people that the world hates, that the, that the world belittled, that the, the world hated and, and called a proverb and, and a byword, that he looks like that people, that he looks like the one that the world has in, has treated as an inferior the so-called negro the world is going to be shocked to see that our lord and our savior hmm, looks like the ones that uh, uh the world has oppressed and suppressed that and that this lord is coming for the so-called negroes latinos native american and Seminole indians only and those of our nation that have been scattered and look different they're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye in a moment as we as we shall be changed and that the Lord is going to give our enemies their just desserts. All right. Now this is verse 10. Crush all those enemy rulers who think they are the only people in the world who matter. Hey, the, the high banging elite, the WEF, the World Economic Forum. The Lord is about to come crash the party and destroy you, you damn devils. All right. And you high banging elites are going to be hiding out. And we're going to pull your ass out. And you're going to go from riches to rags. Okay. And you're going to be put to work. It says, gather the tribes of Israel together, and the Lord is through his word. Beginning with the hopeful elect is the Lord gathering the tribes together. Again, 
and give them back their land as you gave it to them long ago. Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, have mercy on Israel. And the Lord will have mercy upon the whole nation. But beginning with the hopeful elect, will he save? The two thirds will have to suffer after death by pain. But even after that, the Lord is going to have mercy and they're going to be a new creature. Literally a new creature. They're going to be born into, into a glorious kingdom. It says, Lord, have mercy on Israel. The people who, who are known by your name, who you called your firstborn son, take pity on Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So the Lord is taking pity on his people. All right. That's why you see the prophets out there. Yeah, we come with rough words, but really is mercy unto our people is the pity of the Lord to give you one last chance to turn back. And only the elect will. It says, take pity on Jerusalem, your holy city, where you chose to stay. Fill your temple on Mount Zion with your glory and with hymns of praise, because we're going to enter back into Jerusalem with songs. So we're going to sing the songs of Moses and that of the Lamb. We're going to sing, man. We're going to sing loud upon our beds. We're going to praise the Lord. OK, every day of our life, every day of our new life, will, will we praise the Lord. We're going to sing loud upon our beds. That, that time is coming. That day is near. It says testify for your people. Whom you created in the beginning, fulfill the prophecies that have been spoken in your name, in your name. See that? That's important. The prophecy. The prophecies that have been spoken in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai are coming to pass. Wherever the hell Jesus Christ is talking about ain't came to pass. But what Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is speaking about, that is coming to pass. That's why the name is important. And that was a blow to you other camps. Definite destruction to y'all that keep that's keeping back the name, man. It says, verse 16, reward those who have put their faith in you and vindicate your prophets. <laughs> now we're going to go into this word vindicate because it says, uh, 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 and, 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 and may your uh, prophets be found faithful. That's the original version. But we're going to go into this word vindicate and I'm going to close out. And that, 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 uh, concludes the lesson, you know, Lord's willing. It was edifying. And it wasn't too long. We getting down to that point at that time. So like you. vindicate, let's go to vindicate. This is the word vindicate, to avenge or revenge. So the Lord is going to avenge or revenge his prophets. All right, vindicate them. It says to stake claim, to stake a claim. So the Lord is going to stake a claim on his men. Like, no, these were my prophets. These were my true messengers. Not them other guys, not TD fakes and these other clowns. No, these men that you hated. These apostles, elders right here, these prophets. These are the men that I've been dealing with the whole time. And the world going to be shocked. It's going to be gasps. Oh, oh, my. What? Oh, yes. These men it says to liberate. The Lord has liberated us from this world in our minds, and he's going to liberate us from the destruction. It says to act as a as avenger. The Lord is going to avenge us. This is meaning to clear from censor or doubt. The Lord is going to clear our minds from the doubt. We, we says neither fear nor doubt. The Lord is our guide. The Lord told us not to doubt. That was an order not to doubt. Okay, let's keep reading. Let's go uh, into more of these, uh, more of these, more of these explanations, man. Because, I mean, there's a lot going into just this one word vindication. It says act of avenging, revenge, right? Vengeance, revenge. Act of claiming or avenging. So the Lord is going to claim us and avenge us. Claim for freedom. Set free. The Lord has set us free. The Lord is going to protect us. Defend. Avenge. To show authority. The Lord has given us the authority over this earth. That's why no man can step to the apostles, elders, brothers, men of the Lord with any madness. Because we have the authority, just like Yahweh Shai had. Like he speaks with authority. Like, uh, we speak with authority because we're coming in the same uh, mind and spirit as Yahweh Shai. Because we were with Yahweh Shai, if you can receive it. Meaning, it says justification by proof. So the Lord is going to justify us by the proof that he's, that he's dealing with us. First with the prophecies coming to pass, then with the power that the Lord is going to do in his men. It says defense against censor. All right. It says vindicate the verb, which is the action. This is what the Lord is going to do. Show to be right. He's going to show us to be right. He's going to justify us by providing justification or proof. The Lord has proven through his signs, through the words that we speak, 
through his name. Okay, it says uh, it's another verb. Uh, I mean another uh, another uh, definition for vindicate in this uh, definition, or well, I think it's from the word net. It says uh, I just read the top one. This is the second one. It says the maintain. The Lord's gonna maintain us. He's gonna uphold us, and he's gonna defend us from these times that are coming, from the perilous times, from the evils. So they that shall escape. By thy works and by faith. And we're going to see the salvation in the land. As it tells you in uh, 2nd Edges 9. And then this is the last uh, version of vindicate. The verb being the action. It says clear of accusation. All the lies that this devil is going to try to push against us. The Lord is going to clear us of the accusation. Okay. The blame. The suspicion. Or the doubt with supporting proof. The Lord is going to prove us to be in the right. And everyone else in the wrong. Especially our enemies. So with that, hey, Lord's willing, this was an edifying lesson. Lord's willing, it wasn't too noisy. I'm on this road. We'll buy this road, park by it at least. And it's just a one-way road. So I, I, you know, I stopped, stopped off to do this lesson. But Lord's willing, this was an edifying lesson, giving all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash, by whom we do function. Double honors unto my apostles, my elders, and my teachers at Great Millstone that are ruling well. And continue to do so that taught me and brothers like me this truth, this beautiful truth, beginning with the names of our power. All right. And of his anointed salutations, peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect that house of David. To you brothers out there pushing his word in sincerity and in true faith. Shalom to those that are addicted unto this ministry. I say shalom to you few sisters. Yes, I said few sisters doing that which is becoming of women. Shalom to you. Keep it up. We're almost home with that. A. Peace and blessings unto the hopeful elect, that house of David. Yahweh Bashim Al Shabarakatham. Shalom. On to the next one. Shalom.